Hey, what's happening guys? Welcome to Studio 2B, also known as my kitchen, because I have run out of room for 3D printers in the office studio. So what I got for you today is the JG Maker R1. JG Maker is not a name I've heard a lot in consumer printers, but I have heard their name in some high dollar engineering grade printers. So they've been out for a while. They're not a new company. But they appear to be trying to get into the uh, low-end Ender 3, you know, Prusa i3 clone market. And this is their entry, the R1. Let's start off by talking about some parameters of the machine. Uh, total weight is 8.6 kilograms. And the machine total size is uh, 430 by 420 by 605. But your build volume is a standard, you know, Ender 3 i3 size, 230 by 230 by 250 in the vertical. Uh, it uses a direct drive extruder, which you can see right here. Another one of these gigantic extruders, so you have absolutely no way of seeing your first layer. Uh, the layer thickness, 0.1 to 0.04. They recommend 0.2. It uses auto leveling. Print speed of 30 to... Uh, 180 millimeters a second rated power is 380 watts the highest temperature that you're going to get out of the extruder is 260 degrees 100 degrees out of the hotbed and as you can see it has a standard SD card slot and a USB type B connector there it has a double-sided magnetic PEI build plate and you can also see here it comes with a nice little drawer full of tools for all of the critical screws when putting this thing together it came with an extra so there are extra screws there's an extra uh, MK8 type nozzle there some allen screws a wrench or allen wrenches a uh, open box and wrench and a uh, pair of nippers it also comes with the SD card and an adapter a glue stick you know your basic see if it works filament a little plastic scraper very little paper documentation this is all the paper documentation you get everything is on the card and like my uh, Chidi Tech it comes with a plastic sheet that is calibrated for you to set your Z offset and finally, a USB Type A to B shielded cable. Okay, coming around to the back of the machine here, you can see it uses a standard setup. We have the Y axis stepper motor hanging off the back of the machine. There's our belt, and there is our limit switch. Now, if we look at the Z axis, you can see we have one Z motor there and another one over there along with a synchronizing belt which is very nice there's our 380 watt power supply sticking out the back there and you can see it uses the standard roller wheels with eccentric nuts for adjusting the tightness of everything now one of the things I really like about this Let's see if I can bring out the bed here. Zoom out a little bit. So here's the double-sided magnetic PEI build plate. And you can see right back here on the back of the bed. See how I'm hitting that there and there? Same over there. It has alignment for your bed plate. That is such a nice little feature to have. I am really appreciative that they put that on there. Now, if we look at the extruder, it is a dual gear direct drive extruder. We've got a fan here, uh, another fan over here. Extruder uh, external gear you can grab to help feed it. Tensioning lever, filament runout sensor. There's our filament rack, and on the SD card, it comes with this model you can print out that slots into there quite nicely 
and allow you to put a couple different filaments on there. Not that you can use them one at, you know, at the same time automatically. You would have to uh, do that on your own. Now over here we have the 4.3 uh, inch touchscreen. I have to say, honestly, I am not a fan of this interface. So if we look here at the interface, it is a uh, removable, but only a uh, you know maybe about 100 millimeters of uh, um, 200 millimeters probably of uh, cable there. So you're not going very far. So it is a touch screen. These are our controls. We have preheat, extrusion, move, home, leveling, auto filament. Under settings, we have language. And this is a very nice feature here, the machine parameters. So we can come into here and we can see our machine settings. Right now it is set for uh, print acceleration of 2000. Uh, you can read it yourself. You don't need me to do it. And we have our maximum speed settings there. So you could tweak with those a little bit if you wanted to. We have fan controls. We have our about controls. Well, not really a control. Just tell it shows you what's going on there. And then we have our printing menu. And of course, you know, there's nothing there. So if we come into tool, whoops. And the first thing we're going to do is just home the machine. So I'll be back when it's done homing. Okay, the machine's been properly home. Now we have our move controls. You can see X left and right, Y forward and back, Z up and down. And then we have how far you want to move it. 10 millimeters. Each time you touch it, it changes. 0.1, 1, 10. Do it once, and that's all to let you do it. But I guess my biggest gripe is... From this main screen, I have no information about the status of the printer, so I don't know. That's just a little strange to me, but that's the way they wanted it. And it, you know, it, it is a bargain printer. It's selling for $229. All right, let's take a look at the uh, slicer they include. Okay. So it would appear that the JG Create uh, software package they have for you here is, surprise, surprise, Cura. All right, so let's see if we can set this thing up. Setting printer, manage printers. Oh, there's none there. Add new, add non-networked. There we go, R1. So now we have our R1. We have a generic PLA. Let's add in a file. Should have something I can... Uh, here all right just downloaded a uh, the famous Cali dragon don't let me zoom in anymore there we go All right, so resolution, medium, infill, deployed, oh my. All right, I'm just gonna go with their, uh, their settings here. So let's slice it. Forty one minutes. I will save it and we'll get it printed. All right. Got our Cali Dragon on the card here.
pop it in. We'll hit printing. And it's really hard to read that tiny little screen there, but that says Cali Dragon. Print this model. Yes. Now, I was griping about the interface. It does get better when you select something to print. You can see now we have our nozzle temperature here, our bed temperature here, fan rate, guessing that's extrusion rate. This is our Z offset. This is a elapsed time. We have a pause button, a stop button, and this operation button, which is kind of like a tune button. So you see we can adjust temperature, extrusion, fan, and baby stepping. So it is currently heating up. We are at a 40 degrees out of 60 on the bed. Once that's heated up, then the uh, extruder will come into play as well. So let me uh, we'll back this off a little bit here so you guys can see kind of everything that's going on. And once this gets up to temperature, I'll be back. All right, we are just about up to temperature. 197 on the extruder, 60 on the bed. It didn't take very long, maybe about two minutes. There we go. It's getting prepared to print. Doing all its checks to make sure it knows where it's at. And then it's going to do something really interesting over here. It's going to come completely off the bed and start extruding a little pile. And you can see it's almost completely off over here, which is a really nice feature. So this says it's going to take 41 minutes. I'll be back in 41 minutes. Okay, I know I said I'd be back in 41 minutes, but it's only been about five. And the reason I'm back is because it has completed its initial layer and is now printing at its regular speed and regular fan settings. And I have the camera here about an arm's length away from the machine. And it is quite quiet. It's not very fast, but this definitely would not bother you working in a room with it. So I just thought I would mention that. It's a really nice feature. There's our Cali Dragon. It took 46 minutes. And other than the stringing, it looks pretty good. Now I printed out some other stuff as well. For instance, this Tulip. The first one I tried, which is the Bunny. And these little uh, flexible elephants that are really cute. Uh, they printed two at a time. So here is the other one. You can see we got quite a bit of stringing going on. But what I wanted to say was those elephants, as long as this Kelly Dragon, printed with a raft, which comes off really nice. So, I mean, kudos to whoever did that G-code file. That came out really well. So what you see here is a bunch of tiny things. You're probably asking yourself, can you print big things? Yes. Yes, you can. Here is the famous thing hand. Printed in uh, silver silk PLA. And that took almost two days. But it does a good job. So, overall... Where are we at with the JG Maker R1? Alright, well, pros. It is very nice and easy to use. It seems well built. It follows the standard Ender 3, Prusa i3, MK3, you know, layout of these machines that have been out for at least four years. Which brings me to the downside of this, which is there's nothing special about it. It's another i3 bed slinger for $229, trying to compete in the same market as the $199 Ender 3 V3 SE with the completely hands-off setup. <clears throat> you can see how that could be a problem. There's nothing inherently wrong or disappointing with this machine. It is a fine machine. 
but there's nothing great about it either it's just another clone and we're coming up on 2024 here when machines need to stand out a little bit more those machines in there stand out quite a bit more than this so it's a nice machine but it's just another Ender 3 clone. Alright guys, that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys. And a big thanks to JG Maker for sending this out. They have some other printers as well, including an IDEX, which is an independent dual extruder. So you can print you know, two colors at once. Check them out. I'll put a link down below. That's it. I'm out. Peace.